Now, last year, Seattle began raising its minimum wage on the way to a living wage. Now, all along, of course, conservatives have been fighting this and essentially running around with their hair on fire, saying that, no, 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 you, you, you can't do that. You can't raise the minimum wage. You're going to kill jobs. All the business owners are going to go and rand and leave, and then you're all going to be completely fucked. Seattle's going to be a, a jobless wasteland if we raise the minimum wage to $15 an hour. You can't, you can't do that. You can't do that. So what happened? Were they right? Well, according to a recent study done by the Seattle Minimum Wage Study Team at the University of Washington, shows that in Seattle, the higher minimum wage is actually having the, the intended effect that we wanted it to. Now, what does that mean? Well, first, let me give you the details on what they did from that study. Now, in April 2015, the city raised its minimum wage to around uh, from around $9.50 to $11. Now, that, of course, is paving the way to going to a $15 minimum wage by 2017. Now, there's a caveat, of course, for employers with 500 or more employees and certain other employers, right? The minimum wage for most Seattle businesses rose to $10 in April 2015, and 15 will not go into effect for all Seattle businesses until 2021. So that gives, of course, small businesses a little bit more leeway. Oh, that makes sense. Okay, yeah, I know there's a lot of people that are like, no, 15 now, 15 now. In some places you can do that, but I think you've got to be a little bit more flexible when it comes to some of these smaller businesses, which will be impacted far more than, say, McDonald's or Walmart. It just makes sense. Now, the results are from this study is that the pay of affected workers went up almost 12%, compared to a 5% increase for workers in nearby similar places that were not bound by the increase. The study's authors concluded that the increased raise the uh, the increase uh, raised the pay of affected workers by seven percentage points more than might would otherwise have occurred. So basically, you have this place that raised the minimum wage, and you had a twelve point increase. The areas around that were, that were not affected, but were actually affected, but not. Uh, they didn't actually have their uh, minimum wage raised, but they still felt the effects of that. Having their wages raised by 5%. It was like a, a cascade effect, a ripple that started in Seattle and went outward. And it ended up raising wages for everybody. That's awesome. So, look. Pay went up, but of course, uh, conservatives will always say, uh, people will lose their jobs though, right? If you raise the minimum wage, sure, some people will make more, but you're gonna, you're gonna hurt a lot of people because now they're gonna lose their jobs. Did that happen? Eh, not really. Study found that relative to historical trends, the rate at which low wage workers affected by the increase stayed employed rose by about three percentage points. So more people kept their jobs. Interesting. For workers in the control group, however, it was up four points. Thus, absent the minimum wage increase, there'd arguably one percentage point more affected workers employed in Seattle. So once again, we're talking about the ripple effect, right? In that area, more people kept their jobs, 3% more. In the outside areas, in the control group, it went up 4%. 4% of people kept their jobs. Hmm. So essentially what you're saying is that the study is saying is that there's there's little difference. Now the bottom line here is that most minimum wage increases have had their intended effect of lifting the pay of low wage workers with little in the way of job losses. Now that of course flies in the face of the doom and gloom conservative predictions about what would happen in Seattle. Now some of those uh, same people will counter with, yeah, but look, uh, okay, so so their pay went up. But they're hours. I mean, they, they cut their hours, right? That's what they do. That's what they do. So they're actually not getting ahead. In fact, you might actually be hurting them worse since they're getting less hours. Well, that's also not true. The study found that even if workers lost hours of work, their annual income still went up. And the study did point out that, em uh, that employee hours did go up. Now, another part of the study uh, dealt with the Seattle economy at large, right? See, conservatives uh, had claimed the economy would uh, not just not grow, but it would shrink 
because it would hurt job creators so much. Well, what was the reality? In reality, over this period of time that the study looked at, after the minimum wage increase, the Seattle economy had boomed, posting growth rates that tripled the national average and outpassed Seattle's own robust performance in recent years. Now, this study was not perfect. So there are some really important limitations in this that I'm going to read. Now, this is also noted by minimum wage scholar Michael Reich. First, as Reich explains, the authors of this study did not report the standard errors of the estimates, even though their calculations indicated that the employment effect was not distinguishable from zero. This is a serious omission. Policymakers cannot make informed decisions without that information. So that's a good point. Now, second, because of data limitations, the study analyzes employment changes solely in single establishment firms. That means, for example, that retail and restaurant chains, groups significantly affected by the minimum wage, are generally left out of the study. Multi-establishment employers account for about half of Seattle's jobs. So, okay, those are some super important omissions, right? And conservatives that are, uh, you know, wary of this study, that are critical of this study, jumped at that and said, see, look at that. They're leaving out data. They're hiding the truth. Well, no. Because actually, when all establishments were included in this analysis, employment outcomes were relatively more positive in Seattle than in the control group, both for all firms and those lower wage firms. Basically, even with those omissions that should be in there, and I would suggest that they redo this study again, we're still left with the findings of, look, after Seattle raised its minimum wage, the low wage workers' employment hours and wages all still rose substantially. Now, neighboring areas that had similar trends in these variables before the increase, and that, by the way, were also bound by the highest, state, the highest minimum wage in the country, when the increase took effect, saw even larger employment and hours gains. In other words, relatively high minimum wage in Seattle and Washington more broadly have had their intended impact and have been perfectly compatible with a strong economy, one that's beating the national averages. Even with that, even with the omissions, you still look at the data, and you look at the data that was left out, and you still come out with an incredibly positive effect of raising the minimum wage in these areas. Higher minimum wages still equal, obviously, better pay for workers and, and, and uh, better economic outcomes for these workers, as well as more employment, more jobs, more hours, and just better standards of living. That's what it equals out to. So right now, it seems like raising the minimum wage not only helps employers, but it also helps jobs, economic growth. And the only reason that companies are fighting it is because of greed. They want to continue to reap massive profit, profits at the expense of their workers. And unfortunately, we have a group of people who continue to perpetuate myths of job losses in order to help those employers, to help the people, uh, those CEOs, that don't want to share their gains with the workers, continue to do that. Hey everybody, if you like this video, then please like this video and share. And if you want to see more like this, then please hit that subscribe button below.